Welcome to Programming by Practicing, where my aim is to take you from a novice to an expert in a single day. So let's get started. So, a big part of becoming an expert in Ruby is knowing operations related to file system and directories. Today, we're going to learn about how to navigate directories using the commands provided by Ruby. To do that, let me just start off by telling you guys some important functions. First one is dar.pwd. PWD stands for nothing but present working directory. This would actually tell, tell you at which directory Ruby is at. This is usually the directory from which you are executing the script. So let me try executing the script and it printed Ruby scripts, right? And then the next function is dar.home, which tells you the home directory of the current user. If you execute the script, you can see my home directory. Now, instead of the PWD or present working directory, you can also do get WD, which tells you the current working directory. Okay. So now that we've got all those helper functions out of the way, let's talk about the hardcore stuff that, that is traversing the directory structure. Okay. So let's start by defining a directory name. Uh, let's name it secret and let's call it vault. So. The first operation I want to teach you guys is how to create a directory and for that we use the function mkdir and we pass in the parameter of the directory name you can either use a variable simply like this or you can pass it within brackets both are valid in Ruby and once you execute the script you can see that it created a directory vault. Now what happens if you try to run this again it's actually going to spit out an error stating that the file already exists. So what do you do to avoid that? We use an if condition. And the if condition we use is with a function provided by Ruby called exist. That actually tells you whether the directory you want to create already exists or not. And of course, after the function call, you pass in a question mark to denote that this returns a boolean operator. If directory doesn't exist, we give if not. And now if you execute the script, no errors. Of course, instead of if not, you can always substitute it unless, which works exactly the same. Now, let's say I want to delete a directory uh, before creating one and I don't want to use this if condition. So then you use this operator, dar, this function, dar.delete. However, there's a catch. I'll explain a little bit later. So it deleted the existing file directory and then it made it again. Now let me comment this out and try it one more time. No such file or directory. So again, what do you do? We give the if condition using dar.exist and then the, let me, this time let me give without the braces, the directory name so that it will execute the delete command only if the directory exists. Okay. So. Now we've learned how to create a directory and delete a directory. Instead of deleting, you can always use rmdar, which works the same way. Um, let me just create it manually here, mkdar vault. And if I execute this, it's going to delete the vault directory, right? And of course, uh, the next function which I have on my list is empty which actually tells you if this particular directory is empty or not. Uh, let me just put current directory. Uh, if you don't know, whenever you execute the dar command, you get two values dot and dot dot in your file system. Dot actually represents current working directory and dot dot represents the parent. These are two symbols appended to each and every directory. So let me just start by creating vault and cd vault. If I put dir, again you can see dot and dot dot. Dot dot stands for parent directories, which you can use to do cd dot dot. And dot stands for current directory. Anyway, rmdir. Um, otherwise, let's just leave it and let's try secret. So this is actually going to check. This is a useful function that you can use to check whether the directory in question is empty or not. So let's execute the script. If I can find it. And it says it's true because it's empty. There are no files inside, right? And let me now 
remove that directory vault okay so these are the most commonly used functions and now let's get into some traversals so the first thing we need to do is make directory secret and the function you use to traverse among different directories is called chdar which means change directory so if you give chdar ruby actually navigates into the secret directory which we just created right and we can re create one more folder inside let's say i want to put some cache inside the world okay so now if i execute the script it's actually going to create a vault directory navigate inside it create a cache directory if i use the tree command you can see exactly what happened there's a vault and inside it a cache so now how do you delete it i told you delete function has a catch right the problem is let's let me try to delete it if you try to delete a directory it doesn't delete it instead it spits out an error let's see what the error is directory is not empty oh you guys might have seen this error before see if you try to rmdar and then give vault you get a message saying that the directory is not empty this is because generally ruby or file system doesn't allow you to delete uh, directories if it's non empty for that you have to use a recursive function in case of command prompt it's rmdar slash s and then the vault this would delete everything recursively but we don't want to do that we want to delete it using ruby unfortunately you have to navigate inside the secret folder delete the cache directory come back outside using chdar dot dot then delete secret that's a lot of job and a lot of code lines instead what we can use is a gem file provided in one of the standard libraries called file utils and within the file utils we have a function called file utils dot rm underscore r which stands for remove everything recursively and then we use the function secret i mean we pass in the directory secret and now if we execute it the directory is gone this is just a sneak peek of standard libraries we won't be learning that today but we will learn in one of the future lessons okay for now let's just stick with delete so let me create all those directories again uh, execute free all those have been created let me clear it okay now the next function which i want to teach you is how to list the entries within a directory for that the function which we use is called entries if you give this it's actually going to print you all the elements present inside a directory so let's try ruby file.rb it printed dot 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 and cache because these were present when we execute the, the tar command right but what if you don't want to see dot and dot dot because frankly we don't really want to have those files whenever we are doing file operations for that what we can do is use another function children and if you execute this one it just gives you the actual contents which exist within the directory and not the symbolic links provided by unix or windows or whatever for parent and child navigation right and another function you wanna you can use is called globe globe is actually a search function and if you give it the, so if you execute dar.globe it's going to execute on the current working directory you can always change it using dar.chdar which we just learned like two minutes ago right anyway so why is this useful because if you give if you execute this it actually searches and prints you all the names which it matches um we can give dot rb as an extension and this would print only the files which match dot rb extension you can give it you can say that the file should end with e.rb execute the script and it would just print file.rb and time.rb uh, there's a lot of parameters you can pass into the dar.blob function i'll provide all those parameters in the description below basically it's your search utility and you can see almost everyone using this function to get contents out of a directory or search for files which they want 
all right so these were the high level functions provided by ruby but we want to be experts right so now we have to learn the low level functions and that starts with dar.new you can also uh, replace it to dar.open basically what it does is um, it actually opens up a head a seeking head to the directory vault let me explain that in a bit so what this does is it actually opens up a directory object and points it to vault and if you try to print this it's actually going to spit out an object reference see completely useless to us instead what you can do is you can execute low level functions on it it starts with dar.read so this is actually going to print you the directory to which the current head is pointed at so when you execute a dar.open vault it actually pointed to the vault directory and the first element within that and dar.read is going to print the first element which is cache no it's actually the dot entry so if you execute it it printed a dot so the next thing we want to do is actually go to the next child when you do a put as directory dot read it actually goes to the next child so now if i execute dr dot read it's actually going to print me dot dot see and if i execute it again um, it's going to print me cache which is the third element within vault but this is very tedious if you want to go to the third element you have to do dot read dot read dot read instead what you can do is you can use the function seek and again as in programming languages index starts from zero so dot is going to be zero dot dot child is going to be one and cache is going to be two so if you want to directly go to cache you give dar dot seek and then we give dar dot read it's going to directly print cache now what if i do dar dot read again well since there's no other element it's just going to print a blank value right now i went to cache element and i'm printing it now i want to go back go back to the first one so either you can do dar.seek zero or there's a shortcut for it called dar.rewind now this again points the directory pointer to the zeroth element so if you do an execute it printed cache by seeking to second position then it went back to the zeroth position and printed dot you can always use pos to print out at, at which position the pointer is pointing at and then instead of that you can also do tell which does the exact same thing and um, once you've done all these operations it's best to close the directory stream and the directory object and use the function dir.close so that if you try to do let's say a read again it's going to spit out an error this is useful when you are doing multiple directory operations so you always always want to close a resource which you open it's one of the most common reasons for memory leaks happening in programs and we don't want to cause that right because we want to become experts and the last function the last low level function which i want to teach you guys is called two underscore path that's just nothing but it just prints you what constructor was used to open it so if you execute this it printed vault uh, let me clear this so that it's a bit more clear right yeah that's it i guess that's all the functions which i wanted to cover in directories one last goodie because before we leave uh before we stop the lesson right so let's say i want to create um, let me just delete all this okay i'm dr slash s vault and it removed everything including the contents and now if you do three there's nothing which exists okay now if i want to create or mkdr in this case a slash b slash c and if i execute this script this actually doesn't do that why because mkdr function can only make one directory at a time now what if you don't want to execute three different commands to create this again file utils has a sweet little function inside called 
mkdar underscore p which stands for make all the parents before creating the directory which i want which is c so if i pass in this one and i comment this out because i don't like it oh, it's too simple and i execute this and i give a tree command aha all these three directories got created in one single uh, statement that's cool right we'll learn more about file utils in one of the upcom upcoming sessions but for now let's just stick with core functions and all the core functions now you are very familiar with you have become experts in navigating through directories or making directories or searching for files even low level operations of seeking through each and every children thank you thank guys you. for your time once you practice what we've learned today do check out the quiz in the description box to make sure you understood everything thoroughly and if you found this video helpful please like this video and do subscribe to my channel if you have any questions do comment them below and i will answer all of them as fast as i can